left early. Was this a case where he wasn't feeling good all day? Yeah, it, it progressively got worse. Um, his temperature went over 100. I believe it was a one-on-one -on -one and some change. Um, he said he was going to try to give it a go, which he did. Uh, but just just felt too weak, you know, just too just kind of drained, dehydrated a little bit. Uh, but you know, it's that time of the season in terms of it, you know, the winter time and then the weather change and changing climates coming from LA and going to these different places. You know, you have to. It, it, it have, we we dealt with it earlier in the year, and uh, he, he experienced it today. It's, it, again, it set in earlier today and. It sort of worsened as the day went on. Did he, uh, did he go back to the hotel? No, he stayed around. He just stayed around. They put fluids in him, gave him some, some meds, and uh, just kept him back here, tried to keep him as warm as possible. Jarvin, just given how significant his play has been for the last couple of weeks, so you guys were still in the game uh, pretty much through about midway through the fourth. What did you do to stay in the game, and then how was Cleveland able to pull away? I mean, we, we, we just... Um, you know, massage the rotation a little bit. You know, obviously with him not being able, he tried to give it his best, but couldn't sustain it. And so with him going out, um, just really just trying to, you know, throw some different lineups out there. They're really wide, rangy, long, athletic ball club. Um, and so uh, just trying to get some speed out there, you know, combat their size with a little bit of speed. And, you know, my hat's off to our guys, man. They competed their hearts out. That's a huge blow, obviously. You mentioned the way he's been playing here of late. And, um, but to stay, you know, they, they stayed the course and had got through the first half pretty good and made it competitive in the third quarter. And then just the bottom just sort of fell out, had some untimely turnovers. And, you know, it, it's, it's tough. You just team cut. They, they're really, they really are as good as advertised, and they're a deep ball club. And with with a closer like Donovan Mitchell, a really good playmaker, and action creator, and Darius Garland and Jared Allen, those guys like they they really, you have to really keep them off the glass. They have good hands. They can finish in the paint. And so uh, it was a tough challenge, but our guys competed. I'm disappointed, but I'm not upset. Our guys really competed. Assuming you won't know about tomorrow in terms of AD until you talk to him tomorrow, what have you seen from Thomas since he's been back with the thumb and kind of how comfortable are you having him on the court, of course? Just a spark plug off the bench. You know, another guy that, that can catch and finish around the rim, gets us extra possessions on offensive glass, capable shooter from three-point land, um, really sets good screens, focus on establishing hits in the pick-and-roll game and off-ball screens, and, you know, He's just been, again, just another bright spot for us. Considering we're in the post-COVID or current COVID world of the NBA, are there any things the team has to do with Anthony in terms of just keeping him? I, I'm not saying he has COVID, I'm saying, but just the fact that he has the flu, keeping him isolated from his teammates. Uh, yeah, I mean, just people, the COVID has forced people to forget about that there is a, a, a common flu and a common cold that still exists out here. So uh, just doing normally what we would do. I mean, we have some really high-level medical staff members that uh, do to go out of their way and go above and beyond the call of duty to make sure our guys are healthy. And if they're not, to make sure they're in the process of getting back to normal. So um, they'll do what they need to do, and uh, we'll have updates on AD tomorrow. Tarvin, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, when you lose AD, you know, eight minutes into the game and obviously even in those eight minutes didn't really look quite like himself like um how, how tight do those margins get against a team like this and how do you guys think you navigated with him sort of like having to play close to perfect basketball i mean we just didn't make enough shots and we had untimely turnovers the, to me that's what the game came down to pretty much um i thought our defense was pretty good you know they got a lot of, they got 70 paint points but you know they're a really good three-point shooting team and for them to only make seven I thought our defense, you know, us make them, forcing them to play inside the three-point line, we were really good. But, you know, we didn't make enough shots, and we have. I'm, I'm totally comfortable with all the looks we got, but uh, just didn't knock enough down. And then, you know, we're going to halftime, six turnovers for four points, and in the game with 16 turnovers, giving them 18 points. So, 
those extra 10 turnovers and those extra 14 points in the second half, and most of them happened right as we were, you know, we would fight back into it, go up two or three points, and we couldn't establish a cushion, a plus cushion on our side due to some of those untimely turnovers. So, but, you know, it just gives us a chance. It's the 23rd game, gives us a chance to uh, clean up some stuff, uh, take a look at some stuff, see how we can get better. But again, once again, we competed under the circumstances. I'm not upset. I'm not distraught. You know, I'm really disappointed because, you know, we, we competed hard and we just didn't knock down enough shots and take care of the ball at the right time. Darvin, uh, I'm sure it was a pretty tough moment when you had to tell the team that, or when AD left and, and uh, left the bench. Um, what role did LeBron play in kind of marshalling the forces and regrouping once that happened? Just like he's been doing all year, coaching guys up, um, been very, you know, saying encouraging words, uh, just, just really being a leader on the floor, being a leader in the huddle, and, 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 and you know, being vocal in the locker room. So just trying to keep our guys encouraged, you know, but the, it's, it's tough and it's a normal thing. It's human nature and especially human basketball nature for someone to get a little down on themselves if they're not making shots they normally make. And so uh, just him along with our coaching staff and other guys on the team in the mix just clapping up guys, encouraging them. You know, Dennis struggled, missed some shots he would normally make in the first half. He came out, came out in the second half, saw some shots go in. So just keeping guys encouraged, man, that's all you can do. Just if they're having a struggling, having a tough time, you just try to infuse them with a, a, a lot of positive energy from all directions. Not to belabor the point about the illness, but is anybody else sick? No. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.